Last, we know that these days, uh, talking about future of work is becoming very trendy. Everyone is talking about predicting what's going to happen. Is computer going to take over people? In your experience, what do you think the future of work is going to be look like? And how can job seekers be prepared for the future? Yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. We, we've been having this conversation about the future of work for what feels like a decade now. We literally probably have, and, and we continue. So I, you know, the, the, this idea of future of work to me is, is kind of becoming irrelevant. Like it's now. The future of work is now. And, and the, the ever-evolving nature of what it means to work and what it means to look for a job, what it means to have a job, and how companies look for talent – that's continually evolving, um, but I tend to look at it more in, in real time framing uh, and not this kind of you know, horizon of the future of work because we're in that now and, and, and how people find jobs today, uh, how companies look for people, like that's very different now than it was even three years ago. And so I think we're on this kind of continuum of change um, that, uh, that to me I think is, is pretty much gonna be constant uh, for both job seekers and companies. And you also mentioned that uh, finding people is becoming different. Do you think that social media presence or other venues is becoming trend these days in finding talent? Yeah, I mean, look, I think it, when it comes to recruiting, it's never been easier to find talent. Mm -hmm. Talent is, you know, they're, they're, on, they're on GitHub, they're on social media, they're on different platforms. It's not, it, you know, it's, it's not as it hard to find them. Yeah. What is really hard is actually cutting through the noise to get their attention. Mm -hmm. So everybody is bombarding, uh, you know, especially if you look at, you know, really in demand talent, like, you know, engineering talent or mm -hmm. data, you know, scientists or those kind of roles, they're getting bombarded on a constant basis with, um, you know, emails and emails and text messages and everything from candidates. So uh, it's not about how you find that person. It's about how you actually compel them to listen to you, how you, how you craft a message mm -hmm. uh, and, and engage them in a way that they want to be engaged and it's going to resonate with them and kind of, get their attention. And yeah. so that's really what the art I think is in recruiting right now. And then to your first question on things that candidates can do, um, I think one, you have to have some level of a digital footprint. And that doesn't mean that you have to be kind of constantly out there blogging and tweeting and doing everything else. But you know, you, you need to be findable, uh, especially if you're if you're in an active job search. And so that means you know having an updated LinkedIn profile, um, you know, ideally having a, a website where you can Whatever you want on there, you can have a bio, you can have a resume, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, and I think beyond that, I think really from a skills perspective, understanding that your job, regardless of what you do, no matter what field you're in, your job is to be a student. Your job is to be a lifelong learner. And the the market that we're in right now is so dynamic, and education is so dynamic. You're going to need to continually be refreshing your skills. And so the quicker you can embrace learning agility. Uh, early in your career, no matter what role you're in, um, I think the more value that's going to bring you long term. Really I totally agree with you, Lars. Uh, I always tell uh, to people that constantly learning in a job. So if you stop learning, you feel that you're not being motivated, you're not able to do your job. I feel that that's a great point. And also, uh, there's also a lot of research doing this set about in terms of the soft skill, like yeah. empathy, uh, compassion, or even from leadership side. What do you think about those uh, skill sets? Well, they're hugely important. And they're skill sets that robots aren't going to have, right? So when you talk about like the, you know, the future of work, if you go back there, like, you know, we are, you know, AI is going to, in, in, in you know, not tomorrow, but in the near term, it's going to replace some of the menial tasks that, you know, humans do right now that allow us to focus on more of the things that involve soft skills. Uh, and so I think that that's really important. I think it's a leadership trait, massively important. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, LinkedIn had a report last year where they talked about some of the most in-demand skills and a lot of them were soft skills. Yeah. So I think that that is, that is definitely a very important shift uh, that's happening in business that is important for candidates to, to be thinking about. I totally agree with you, Lars. And thank you again for those great tips. And for the audience watching, if you have any other tips in terms of future of work, what skill sets should job seekers have or how should be, they should be prepared, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, like and share the videos, subscribe to the channel and tune in tomorrow for another question with Lars.